Enter into a realm of fright, blacker than the darkest night. Your sanity hangs by a thread. Welcome to the House of Dread. Most of us, at some point in our lives, have experienced the stressful situation of needing extra money. In a world where cash is king, the desperation for money can consume your every thought and action. Has it ever been so bad for you that you were willing to go to extreme lengths and do things you never thought you would do just to get some extra cash? It's a very dark and unsettling place to be, and once desperation takes over your reasoning, it can lead you down a path that you never thought you'd venture. Enter Raven. Raven is a wild and crazy party girl from the East Coast. She has a rebellious and carefree attitude about life often throwing caution to the wind as she's known for making careless decisions and riding on the razor's edge of life. Drinking, drugs, promiscuity, and running with bad crowds were just the tip of the iceberg for Raven. Although she was a female, her energy was very masculine. She loved conflict and would fight both verbally and physically, with other women, and even with men. She was also known as a goth girl, and was heavily tattooed with piercings galore. Raven came from what many would consider to be a broken home. Her father was an overweight, raging alcoholic who never held a job for more than several months, and her mother was a drug addict who often disappeared for days at a time. Raven had to fend for herself from a very young age, and this led to her being fiercely independent, but also reckless and impulsive. As a young adult, Raven was struggling immensely to get on her feet. Taking after her father, it was common for her to randomly quit jobs after only a few months with no compelling reasons as to why. This caused Raven to develop an inconsistent work history that, on paper, made her look unemployable. The instability and financial pressures that came as a result of Raven's negligent lifestyle drove her into a deep depression, and just like her mother, she resorted to drugs to numb the pain of her empty and unfulfilling life. But of course, drugs only made things worse. Raven was sliding down a slippery slope and was trying desperately to get a grip on herself. The cold hard truth was that Raven simply shunned responsibility. She'd basically spent her entire life as a free spirit and the last thing she wanted was to join the adult world of commitments and obligations. It was apparent, however, that Raven's rebellious attitude of never wanting to grow up was destroying her life, and the struggle to get through each day was becoming more and more of a battle. One of Raven's friends convinced her to join a support group in the hopes that she would get some positive reinforcement that would inspire her to get her life back on track. During one of the group's nightly meetings, Raven's counselor asked her if she'd had ever considered going back to school to further her education and establish herself in a career so she could finally get off the hamster wheel of minimum wage jobs. Although Raven wasn't opposed to the idea, she was totally clueless as to what she would study. Raven's chaotic and traumatic life had caused her to lose sight of her passions and interests. She couldn't even remember the last time she stopped to think about what really made her happy. After meditating on it for some time, Raven realized that she'd always been fascinated by forensic science, 
the study and analysis of evidence related to crime scenes. This particular field intrigued Raven due to her love of the macabre and the darker aspects of the human experience. She entertained fantasies of solving gruesome crimes and putting away the bad guys. She imagined it would be a perfect fit for her. There was just one problem. Raven was flat broke and had no way of paying the expensive tuition for the classes. After doing some research, she discovered that even if she got financial aid and went to a community college, she was still going to need at least $5,000 just to get started. But Raven wasn't ready to give up. For the first time in her life, she had a worthwhile goal to pursue, and she was determined to find a way. At first, Raven assumed that she would just get another job and start saving her pennies. She figured that having the goal of going back to school to learn something she was excited about would give her more incentive to maintain her job instead of quitting like she always did. Unfortunately, however, Raven quickly found out that saving money wasn't as easy as it sounded. Every time she would start to stack a little cash, something would cause her to spend it. Her car would break down or some other random emergency would take place, forcing her to spend her little nest egg. Raven was starting to feel like life was conspiring against her, and she was losing patience with making one step forward only to have to take two steps back. Raven started looking for ways to supplement her income. She brainstormed a list of side hustles she could take on to try and raise the money for her schooling. She thought about something she could do in the evenings or possibly on the weekends that would give her pockets a little extra padding. One day, as Raven was job searching on Craigslist, she came across a compelling ad for a part-time caretaker position. The ad read, are you in need of some extra cash? Looking for a part-time job that offers flexibility and requires no prior experience? We may have the perfect opportunity for you. We are currently seeking a part-time caretaker for an elderly woman in need of assistance. This position is ideal for anyone who is looking to earn some extra income without the commitment of a full-time job. No experience is necessary. If you're interested, please contact us at the number below, and we thank you for your consideration. Raven could not believe her luck. This was just what she was looking for. Although the ad said nothing about what the job paid, the flexible schedule coupled with the fact that she didn't have to have any prior experience sold Raven on the opportunity. After all, she figured, the compensation couldn't be any worse than what she was already making, and helping an old lady sounded easy enough. Raven immediately called the number listed on the ad, but it went straight to voicemail. She left a message expressing her interest in the position and included her name and contact information. Raven's heart sank as she began to wonder if the position had already been filled. The next day, while Raven was at work on her lunch break, she got a phone call from a random number and started not to answer it. But then she remembered the message she had left the previous day in regard to the caretaker position and wondered if this was the callback she had been waiting for. Reluctantly, Raven answered the phone, and a woman with a rather low and raspy voice was heard on the other end. The woman introduced herself as Mrs. Thompson and mentioned that she had received a message from Raven about the caretaker position. Mrs. Thompson inquired if Raven was still interested. Elated to find out that the position was still open, Raven enthusiastically stated that she was both interested and available. Mrs. Thompson proceeded to invite Raven for an interview at her house the following morning. Raven graciously accepted the invitation while attempting to contain her excitement. Mrs. Thompson then shared her address 
and requested that Raven arrive promptly at 10 a.m. With both gratitude and disbelief, Raven ended the call. This opportunity was the breakthrough she had been waiting for. The next day, Raven found herself standing outside the house of Mrs. Thompson. Looking around, she couldn't help but notice how remote the area was. The road leading to the house was narrow and winding, with no signs of any other houses or people nearby. Curious as to whether or not she had the right house, Raven cautiously approached the front door and knocked. As she waited for someone to answer the door, Raven observed the peeling paint, overgrown shrubs, and gigantic spider webs that hung from various parts of the roof. The house looked run down and dirty, and she could only imagine what the inside looked like. Raven knocked again, but by now part of her was hoping no one would answer, as she was starting to have second thoughts. Suddenly the door opened. Mrs. Thompson stood before Raven with a piercing gaze in her eyes that made Raven feel a little intimidated. Raven introduced herself and explained that she had inquired about the caregiver position and had an appointment to meet with Mrs. Thompson. Mrs. Thompson then proceeded to look Raven up and down, observing her tattoos and piercings. She seemed a bit disappointed and thrown off by Raven's gothic look, but eventually gestured for Raven to come inside. As Raven stepped inside the old house, a wave of unease washed over her. The atmosphere felt eerie, as though the house had been frozen in time. The walls were adorned with fading wallpaper, peeling and discolored from years of neglect. The floors creaked with each step, adding to the unsettling ambiance. A strong, musty smell hung heavy in the air, a combination of old books, aging wood, and forgotten memories. The scent seemed to seep into every corner of the house, enveloping Raven in a sense of age and decay. Raven caught sight of a shelf furnished with a row of old creepy dolls. Their glassy eyes seemed to follow her, their porcelain faces frozen in twisted smiles. The furniture, covered in a thick layer of dust, seemed as neglected as the rest of the house. The cushions were faded and worn, giving off an aura of abandonment. The once vibrant fabrics now seemed lifeless and dull. Mrs. Thompson invited Raven to have a seat on one of the couches in their main living area so they could begin discussing the particulars of the job. As they sat, Mrs. Thompson reached for a hot cup of tea and began stirring it ever so slowly. The clinking sound of the spoon against the cup seemed to reverberate through the entire house that was otherwise eerily quiet. Mrs. Thompson began the interview by asking Raven exactly why she was interested in the position. Raven explained that she was trying to go back to school to study forensic science and that she needed the extra money to pay for her tuition and classes. Raven thought sharing this information with Mrs. Thompson would give her a better chance of landing the job. She assumed Mrs. Thompson would be able to empathize with a young person trying to further their education and better themselves. Instead, however, Mrs. Thompson merely sat there with a blank stare on her face, looking totally unimpressed. After a moment of awkward silence, Mrs. Thompson proceeded to ask Raven exactly how much money she needed. Now this kind of put Raven on the spot and she felt a bit uncomfortable giving these details to Mrs. Thompson, but she finally stated that she would need at least $5,000 for her enrollment. Again, Mrs. Thompson merely sat with a blank stare. Her eyes were cold and she seemed to never blink. Raven began to feel as though Mrs. Thompson was judging her 
Naturally, this made Raven feel very uneasy, and she was on the verge of telling Mrs. Thompson that she had reconsidered, as she was literally preparing to walk out of the interview. Suddenly, Mrs. Thompson made Raven an offer that she simply could not refuse. Mrs. Thompson went on to explain to Raven that she would in fact be willing to pay her $5,000 a month for her services. Raven would also be paid $2,500 in cash up front if she could start the next day and would receive the remaining $2,500 at the end of the month, at which time Raven could give an evaluation of the job and let Mrs. Thompson know if she wished to continue her duties as a caretaker. Raven couldn't believe what she was hearing. $2,500 in cash up front for doing absolutely nothing? Raven felt it was inappropriate to accept such a large sum of money without having rendered any services, but Mrs. Thompson insisted. Well, Raven certainly wasn't going to argue against such a generous proposition. In an instant, Raven went from feeling offended by Mrs. Thompson's cold demeanor to feeling optimistic and hopeful. She definitely needed the money, and to think that in a mere 30 days she could be on her way to living her dream of becoming a forensic scientist. The deal was simply too good to pass up. Raven then proceeded to ask Mrs. Thompson for a description of some of the services she would be providing. Mrs. Thompson explained that her services would include things like cleaning the house, doing the laundry, and cooking meals. She would also be required to administer medication, as well as assist with personal hygiene and facilitate bathroom duties. As Raven listened very closely to the list of responsibilities and obligations that she was about to take on, she thought to herself that she had never had to do such things for anyone before, and the process sounded very involved. But since Mrs. Thompson had stated that no experience was necessary, Raven thought to herself, how hard could it be? Besides, by now, Raven was fixated on the prospect of having $5,000 cash to continue her education and start her new life. She wasn't about to let anything get in the way of that. Mrs. Thompson then stood up and stated that she wanted to give Raven a tour of the house, as well as introduce her to the person she would be providing her services to. As Mrs. Thompson gave Raven a brief tour of the house, the eerie atmosphere grew stronger. Each room she entered was a snapshot of a bygone era, filled with relics of a forgotten time. Although Raven was very much focused on the money, she still had reservations about having to spend a significant amount of her time in such a drab environment every day. The house was downright depressing. There was no life or vibrance to it at all, and Mrs. Thompson herself was as cold as a dead fish. Finally, it was time for the grand introduction, and Raven was escorted to the master bedroom of the house. Mrs. Thompson turned the old brass knob of a large wooden door that served as the entrance to the master bedroom. The door opened slowly, as Mrs. Thompson gestured for Raven to follow her inside. As they entered the room, Raven could see a frail old woman sitting in a wheelchair by a large window. The woman was staring out of the window as if she was waiting for a long-forgotten relative to return home. Mrs. Thompson proceeded to grab the handles on the back of the wheelchair and turned the wheelchair around so the woman and Raven could see each other. Mrs. Thompson then introduced the woman as her grandmother, Mildred Thompson, also affectionately known as Granny Mimi. Raven carefully extended her hand to Granny Mimi in an effort to introduce herself, but Granny Mimi didn't reciprocate 
Instead, she merely sat staring into space. Her eyes were empty and sad. Raven felt awkward as she asked Mrs. Thompson if Granny Mimi could even speak. Mrs. Thompson explained that Granny Mimi could indeed speak, but that she rarely ever did. Little did Raven know that part of the reason Granny Mimi rarely spoke was that she was harboring a dark secret that would change the course of Raven's life in ways she never could have imagined. And so, Raven began settling into her new role as Granny Mimi's caretaker. As Mrs. Thompson promised, Raven was paid $2,500 up front. Raven decided to keep her day job so it would be easier to keep from disturbing her nest egg. It was a great financial decision, but it was grueling on Raven's time and energy. Raven worked her day job from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Then she would drive an hour out to Mrs. Thompson's house to take care of Granny Mimi from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. Then she would usually get home around midnight, only to have to be back up at 6 a.m. to do it all over again. Raven was also struggling to adapt to the demands of being a caretaker for an elderly person who wasn't capable of doing much for themselves. There were certain elements of the job she was not mentally or emotionally prepared for, such as being exposed to bodily fluids and handling awkward and sometimes very heavy medical equipment. Raven was absolutely exhausted but she just kept telling herself that it was a temporary situation and that she desperately needed the money to go back to school. It gave her the drive and motivation to push through the discomfort. This was a dramatic difference from the impulsive, carefree existence that Raven had lived for most of her life. She finally had joined the world of adult responsibility, and although it was tough, she felt like she was growing. And indeed, she was. Raven tried hard to develop a bond with Granny Mimi, but she couldn't help feeling a sense of unease whenever she was in the old woman's presence. Day after day, she would sit by Granny Mimi's side, engaging in one-sided conversations, hoping to get Granny Mimi to open up. But the old woman remained silent her eyes fixed on something unseen, as if trapped in a world of her own. About two weeks into her new caretaking role, Raven was finally starting to find her rhythm. She was becoming increasingly adapted to the new routine and had developed ways of making her work easier, faster, and more efficient. Just as Raven was starting to feel as if she had everything under control, she started noticing some very off-putting behavior from the granddaughter, Mrs. Thompson. As Raven would be going about her duties assisting Granny Mimi, she would often look up and catch Mrs. Thompson staring at her with a cold, piercing gaze that totally creeped her out. When Raven would ask her if there was something wrong, Mrs. Thompson would simply turn and walk away, saying nothing. One particular night, Raven was very disturbed to hear maniacal laughter coming from the bedroom where Mrs. Thompson slept. When Raven knocked on the door to once again ask Mrs. Thompson if everything was okay, the laughter immediately stopped and was replaced by an eerie and deadening silence. Strangest of all, Mrs. Thompson never came and answered the door. Raven slowly backed away from the room and decided it was probably best to leave Mrs. Thompson to her own devices. Raven's unease grew with each passing day, making it difficult for her to focus on her work. She couldn't help but feel as if her every move was being watched. Raven was also beginning to think that Mrs. Thompson was taking great pleasure in making her feel uncomfortable. Raven seriously considered quitting at the end of the month, 
when she received the other $2,500. She couldn't bear the thought of continuing to work under Mrs. Thompson and was anxious to get the hell away from this dreaded house. One evening, as Raven was tidying up the living room, she noticed something hanging on the wall. It was a family portrait of Mrs. Thompson, Granny Mimi, and three other people that Raven had never seen before. But there was something seriously wrong with the picture. The faces of the other three people had been painted over with dark, eerie strokes. It was as if they had been erased from existence. Raven shuddered as she thought to herself, who in the hell would destroy a family portrait like this and then leave it hanging on the wall? More importantly, Raven wondered who those other three people were and why they were erased from the photograph. Raven felt shivers running down her spine as she struggled to forget about the portrait and get back to her chores. As she turned around to resume her housework, Raven was terrified to find Mrs. Thompson staring directly at her with that same unrelenting cold and dead look in her eyes. Raven felt like she was two feet tall, as if she was a child who had just been caught red-handed with her hands in the cookie jar. Mrs. Thompson stood there slowly stirring a cup of tea as she glared at Raven and proceeded to angrily ask her what the hell she was doing. Raven felt sick to her stomach. She struggled to formulate her words as she told Mrs. Thompson she wasn't feeling well and that she needed to leave early. Mrs. Thompson made it a point to let Raven know that if she left, it would be deducted from her check at the end of the month. But Raven could care less. She was working hard as hell and was finally getting fed up with Mrs. Thompson's constant scrutiny and cold demeanor. That night, as Raven drove home, she made up her mind that at the end of the month, she was going to collect her last check and be done with the caretaking job. Raven had tried her absolute best to stick it out, but the constant pressure and stress of dealing with Mrs. Thompson, Granny Mimi, and the haunting atmosphere of that old creepy house had all proven to be too much. She told herself that some things were more important than money, like her sanity. The next evening, Raven was back at work. She had fed Granny Mimi, given her a bath, and was preparing to put her to bed for the night. Raven had a routine of positioning Granny Mimi's wheelchair by her bedside and then hugging Granny Mimi while slowly lifting her out of the chair and pivoting her gently onto the bed. As Raven embraced Granny Mimi, wrapping her arms around her tightly in preparation to make the transition, Granny Mimi proceeded to whisper something into Raven's ear that literally gave her the chills. She's not my granddaughter. Raven jolted and immediately stepped back from Granny Mimi. Struggling to formulate her words, Raven asked Granny Mimi to repeat what she had just said. But the old woman remained silent. Raven crouched down took Granny Mimi's hands and looked deep into her eyes as she begged and pleaded for her to repeat her words. But again, Granny Mimi sat staring into empty space as if she was lost in another realm. The truth was that Raven had heard Granny Mimi loud and clear. Deep down, she knew exactly what the old woman had said. The only question was, if she was referring to who Raven thought she was referring to, or was she talking about someone else? In all honesty, Granny Mimi certainly didn't seem like she was all there, and initially, Raven tried to use this as justification that Granny Mimi was probably just rambling or confused. But Raven's intuition wouldn't allow her to play games with herself. In the pit of her stomach, she knew that Granny Mimi was referring to Mrs. Thompson, and the mere thought of that made the hair stand up on the back of Raven's neck. <laughs>
Now all of Mrs. Thompson's strange behavior was starting to make more sense. And if Mrs. Thompson was indeed not Granny Mimi's real granddaughter, then who the hell was she? Raven felt shivers running down her spine, and she was trembling as she wondered who she had been working for all these weeks. Raven was totally terrified. She had already told herself she'd be quitting the job at the end of the month when she collected her second check, but now she was wondering if she even wanted to stay that long. That night when Raven returned home, she couldn't eat or sleep. Granny Mimi's words kept circling in her mind like a nightmarish carousel. All Raven could do was wonder how she ended up in such a drastic situation. Of course, her need for extra money was definitely part of it. But now she was starting to care less about the money and more about her personal safety. Raven seriously considered calling Mrs. Thompson in the morning to report her immediate resignation. But she was still a long way away from having the money she needed for school. Raven tossed and turned in the bed all night as she began to feel like she was stuck in a lose-lose situation. Finally, Raven rationalized that since there was only one week left before the end of the month, it was probably worth it to at least try and tough it out so she could collect her last check. Raven told herself that she would simply keep her head down and her mouth shut. Acting as if nothing had changed, she would attend to her duties as normal to avoid arousing any suspicion from Mrs. Thompson. Raven was scared to death, but she desperately needed that money, and it was so close. At least on the surface, her plan sounded somewhat reasonable. And so, Raven returned to work the next day, hopeful that she would be able to make it to the end of the week so she could collect her final check from Mrs. Thompson and get the hell out of there. Little did Raven know, however, that fate would have other things in mind. The next night, a terrible thunderstorm was brewing as Raven was giving Granny Mimi her evening meal. Suddenly, Granny Mimi became sick and regurgitated on the floor. Frustrated and trying hard to hide her shock and disgust, Raven compassionately asked Granny Mimi if she was okay. Then she told the old woman to wait as she left to retrieve the mop and bucket. As Raven searched for her cleaning supplies, she found Mrs. Thompson at the kitchen table having some tea. Mrs. Thompson sat with her legs crossed, staring intently at her cup, slowly stirring the tea as if it were a witch's brew. Once again, the clinking sounds of the spoon against the teacup echoed through the entire house as time seemed to stand completely still. Raven approached the table and proceeded to inform Mrs. Thompson that Granny Mimi had become sick and that she needed the mop and bucket, but both items had been moved from their original place. Mrs. Thompson kept staring at her teacup, and without even so much as looking up to make eye contact with Raven, she mumbled that both the mop and bucket were in the basement. Once again thrown off by Mrs. Thompson's lack of emotion, Raven said thanks and slowly backed away from the kitchen table. She watched as Mrs. Thompson kept mechanically stirring her tea, but never raised the cup to take a single sip. Raven shook her head as she thought to herself, just one more week. Raven descended down the stairs into the basement in search of the mop and bucket. The basement was a hoarder's dream as it was filled with stacks of boxes, old furniture and various knickknacks that the Thompsons had most likely been holding on to for generations. <laughs> 
Raven located the mop and bucket just a few feet from the bottom of the stairway and proceeded to retrieve them so she could get back to Granny Mimi. Suddenly, Raven noticed a foul odor in the air. It was quite strong and didn't smell like something that would be coming from the endless stacks of old dusty boxes and forgotten belongings that were strewn about. Raven followed the smell, moving aside some old furniture and antiques, only to discover an old rusty chest freezer sitting in the far corner of the basement. Raven was thinking to herself, Get the mop and bucket and take your ass back upstairs. But by now, Raven's curiosity had gotten the better of her. She began to slowly approach the chest freezer, the foul odor becoming stronger with every step she took. As Raven now stood before the freezer, the smell was so putrid that she was covering her nose and mouth with the sleeve of her shirt. Strange enough, the freezer didn't seem to be working. It wasn't even plugged in. Obviously, whatever was inside had rotted, and this definitely had to be the source of that disgusting smell. All Raven had to do now was lift the lid to see what was inside. Part of her dared not but the other part of her rationalized that she'd come this far and that she might as well finish what she started. With trembling hands, Raven slowly gripped the lid of the chest freezer and began raising it in the air. As the lid opened, the foul stench hit her in the face so hard that she nearly fainted but she held her breath as she managed to push the lid back and almost had a stroke at what she found. The scene before her eyes was more horrifying than she could have ever imagined, and Raven's eyes widened in sheer terror as she took in the ghastly sight. Lying in a bed of stench and decay, were three rotting corpses that had been jammed into the freezer like a can of sardines. The bodies were badly decomposed to the point where their features were barely recognizable. Their skin was discolored, mottled with patches of dark green and sickly yellow. The flesh on the faces of the corpses had sunken leaving behind deep hollows where the eyes and cheeks once were. The lips of the bodies had receded, exposing their yellowed teeth in a grotesque skeletal grin. Raven could see the outline of their bony frames, skin clinging to their now emaciated bodies. Raven let out a terrifying scream. Her heart almost froze as she began to realize the seriousness of the situation she was in. She no longer cared about the money, Granny Mimi, or anything other than getting the hell out of there. In a panic, Raven stumbled backward onto the floor as she struggled to navigate through the maze of random junk that filled the basement. As she reached the bottom of the stairway, she saw Mrs. Thompson standing at the top of the stairs. Raven was totally speechless as her and Mrs. Thompson locked eyes with each other. Raven knew Mrs. Thompson had heard her screaming, but she was so terrified she couldn't come up with a creative excuse for why she screamed or why she had been in the basement for so long. Raven knew she had overstepped her boundaries by peeking into the freezer and she didn't want to upset Mrs. Thompson by letting her know what she had discovered. Raven was scared out of her mind, and all she wanted to do was go home. Little did Raven know, Mrs. Thompson knew exactly why she was screaming. She was well aware of Raven's shocking discovery, and she also knew that Raven was now trying to escape. But that wasn't about to happen. Raven stuttered as she attempted to inform Mrs. Thompson that she was once again not feeling well and needed to go home for the night. 
Mrs. Thompson stood at the top of the stairs like a statue and said absolutely nothing. Then she began to slowly descend down the stairs, each step creaking beneath her feet and filling the air with an eerie sense of anticipation. Raven then noticed that Mrs. Thompson had one of her hands behind her back. Raven stuttered again as she asked Mrs. Thompson what she was doing, but again, Mrs. Thompson gave no response. Finally, Mrs. Thompson cracked a sinister smile as the hand she was holding behind her back came forward, revealing a shiny meat cleaver. Horrified, Raven began quickly scanning the basement for a place to run and hide, but with all the junk and clutter, there was nowhere for her to go. Continuing her gradual descent down into the basement, Mrs. Thompson started laughing, amused at Raven's attempt to escape her impending doom. She knew she was not about to let Raven leave that house alive. Suddenly, Mrs. Thompson screamed at the top of her lungs and began to charge at Raven like a wild animal, swinging her meat cleaver with deadly force. Pumped with adrenaline, Raven managed to dodge the initial attack, narrowly escaping the deadly swing. Raven began frantically rummaging through the clutter in the basement, desperately searching for something that she could use as a weapon. Her trembling hands grabbed a heavy metal pipe. Gripping it tightly, she turned to face Mrs. Thompson, ready to defend herself. The room was filled with tense silence as the two women locked eyes. Mrs. Thompson's cold, calculating gaze contrasted with Raven's defiant glare. Each passing second, the air grew thicker with an unspoken understanding that only one of them would emerge from this battle alive. Without warning, Mrs. Thompson lunged at Raven again, swinging the meat cleaver and cutting Raven across the forearm. Raven screamed in agony as she began bleeding profusely. In a fit of rage, Raven began swinging her metal pipe like a Louisville slugger bat tagging Mrs. Thompson two times in the ribs. But to Raven's utter shock and horror, Mrs. Thompson seemed totally unaffected. This woman was tough as nails, and Raven suddenly had the frightening realization that this was not going to be an easy victory. The women kept fighting for what seemed like an eternity, yelling, screaming, tussling and tumbling, at this point, it was a battle of wills. Who had the strongest will to survive? Finally, Raven's metal pipe caught Mrs. Thompson with a blow to the gut. Mrs. Thompson was now doubled over in pain, holding her stomach and struggling to catch her breath. As Mrs. Thompson stood bent over, Raven mustered all of her strength and swung her metal pipe up from the ground, striking Mrs. Thompson across the forehead and knocking her backwards. As Mrs. Thompson fell, she struck the back of her head on a large wooden table and broke her neck. Instantly, an eerie silence took over the space. Raven cautiously approached Mrs. Thompson's body as it lies still on the cold concrete floor of the basement. She leaned in and looked into Mrs. Thompson's eyes. They were empty and lifeless. Mrs. Thompson was dead. Raven stood frozen in shock, her trembling hands stained with blood and her heart pounding in her chest. The reality of the situation sank in as she realized the gravity of what had just transpired. Mrs. Thompson, the supposed granddaughter of Granny Mimi, lay lifeless on the floor, her icy demeanor forever silenced. Meanwhile, Raven was left with the responsibility of picking up the pieces of this grossly traumatic experience. She knew proving her innocence to the authorities wouldn't be easy, 
that it was the only way she'd be able to move on with her life. During the investigation, Raven was eventually ruled out as a suspect. Granny Mimi was transferred to a local nursing home and the Thompson residence was boarded up and sealed forever. One of the officers met with Raven and gave her the background story on Mrs. Thompson. As it turns out, Mrs. Thompson's real name was Ethel Mayflower, and she was the original longtime caretaker for Granny Mimi. In fact, Ethel had been taking care of Granny Mimi for over 20 years and had become a very close and trusted friend of the Thompson family. Ethel also served as Granny Mimi's conservator and was responsible for at least most, if not all, of her financial affairs. She had access to Granny Mimi's personal accounts, which were in the millions, and ensured that all of her medical expenses were met and that her bills were paid on time. The Thompsons were a family of wealthy real estate tycoons going back at least two generations. According to Granny Mimi's will, upon her passing, her estate was to be inherited by her three adult grandchildren, Ted, 46, David, 42, and Sarah, 38. However, Granny Mimi's will also stated that if anything were to happen to her grandchildren, Ethel would be next in line to inherit the estate. In Ethel's mind, she felt like she should have been first in line to inherit the estate for her 20 plus years of service and dedication to Granny Mimi, while the grandchildren did absolutely nothing to help their grandmother and simply came and went as they pleased. Meanwhile, Ethel worked round the clock, cooking, cleaning, taking Granny Mimi to doctor's appointments and managing her other personal affairs. Ethel felt underappreciated and like she was being taken for granted. This caused her to become angry and bitter towards the Thompson family, particularly towards the grandchildren. As the officer laid out the details, Raven's mind flashed back to that creepy family portrait she found in the living room where three of the people's faces had been painted over with dark, eerie strokes. She then connected the family portrait to the three corpses she found in the basement. Those were Granny Mimi's real grandchildren. The officer provided no details as to how Ethel did it, but he said it was believed that one day she snapped and began picking off the grandchildren one by one, stuffing each of their deceased bodies in the chest freezer. With the grandchildren out of the way, Ethel had successfully positioned herself to inherit Granny Mimi's estate. Raven asked the officer why didn't Ethel just kill Granny Mimi after killing the grandchildren. The officer said he wasn't sure, but it's believed that since Granny Mimi was very sick and seemed like she was so close to death already, Ethel probably figured she could just wait and allow it to happen naturally. Plus, if Granny Mimi died of natural causes, this would have also allowed her to inherit the estate without raising any immediate suspicions of foul play. However, in the short term, Ethel still wanted to get some temporary relief from her obligations to Granny Mimi, which explains why she posted the Craigslist ad trying to recruit replacement caretakers. As the investigation reached its conclusion, Raven couldn't help but feel a mix of relief and sorrow. With the truth exposed, Mrs. Thompson's true identity and her heinous acts had been brought to light. The house that was once shrouded in darkness now stood as a testament to the horrors it held within. Raven began periodically visiting with Granny Mimi in the nursing home she was now in. She would bring her food and flowers, keeping the old woman company and doing what she could to brighten her spirits. Days turned into weeks as Granny Mimi's frail health deteriorated even further 
It seemed as if each passing moment brought her closer to her final breath. One day, on what would be Raven's final visit with Granny Mimi, she got a pleasant surprise. Granny Mimi began to talk. Raven couldn't believe it. After months of silence, Granny Mimi was actually conversing with her. Her voice was weak and feeble as she struggled to express her gratitude to Raven, who had unwittingly unraveled the family's dark secret. With her trembling hand, Granny Mimi handed Raven a worn envelope. Raven graciously accepted the envelope, but Granny Mimi told her to promise she wouldn't open it until after she had returned home. Raven agreed, and they continued with their visit. Later that afternoon, as Raven prepared to leave, she began to realize that despite everything she'd been through with Granny Mimi, she had actually developed a genuine bond with the old woman. She saw her as a kindred spirit, someone who had endured all manner of hardship, but still held on to hope. Raven took Granny Mimi's hands into her own, and in the most warm and sincere way, said goodbye. Granny Mimi's eyes were filled with tears as she looked at Raven and with a voice that was barely audible said, thank you. Later that night, as Raven was preparing to go to bed, she remembered she had forgotten to open the envelope Granny Mimi had given to her. Raven sat on the side of her bed and meticulously opened the envelope careful not to tear the contents inside. What she found took her breath away. It was a check for $10,000, twice the amount of money she needed to go back to school. Raven broke down and cried. Now she understood why Granny Mimi didn't want her to open the envelope while she was visiting with her. Raven would have never accepted such a gift, and Granny Mimi knew it. Suddenly, Raven's cell phone started ringing. She answered, and it was the nursing home calling to inform Raven that Granny Mimi had passed away. Raven broke down again. It was definitely a bittersweet moment. As the weeks and months rolled on, Raven did take the money from Granny Mimi and used it to further her education in forensic science. One day, as she sat in the cafeteria on her campus during her lunch, she couldn't help but feel a sense of irony in the way things had played out. Her desire to become a forensic scientist had somehow landed her right smack in the middle of a real-life crime drama one that she almost didn't live to talk about. But Raven decided she would use the horrific experience as fuel for her career. After all, she now had real-world experience that her classmates and professors couldn't possibly imagine. As she sat enjoying her lunch, Raven heard a familiar sound that gave her the creeps it was the sound of someone stirring a cup of tea. And in fact, that's exactly what it was. Directly across from Raven's table sat a woman. She had her legs crossed and was slowly and mechanically stirring a cup of tea in the precise manner that Mrs. Thompson used to do. Raven shuddered as the clinking sound of the spoon seemed to be getting louder, taking over the entire campus. It was as if the past was haunting her, refusing to let her go. Raven couldn't believe her eyes. Could it be possible that Mrs. Thompson was here on campus? Petrified and trying hard to ignore the unease that settled in the pit of her stomach, Raven mustered up the courage to approach the woman. As she began walking over to the table, her heart was pounding in her chest. Raven approached, and the woman suddenly looked up. 
her cold, calculating eyes meeting with Raven's. The woman proceeded to ask Raven, Can I help you? Raven nervously replied, Oh, I'm sorry, but I couldn't help but notice the way you stir your tea. It reminds me of someone I used to know. The woman smiled and said, Well, that's interesting. Raven, who was beginning to feel awkward by now, told the woman to have a nice day as she proceeded to get back to class. As Raven turned and walked away from the table, she couldn't help but feel as if the woman's eyes were fixed on her, burning a hole in the back of her head. But Raven didn't have the nerve to turn around and find out. It was in that very moment that Raven realized she had been through something that she was never going to forget and that the Thompsons had forever etched themselves into the tapestry of her life. Raven was flushed with a mix of emotions. Joy and gratitude were tinged with a sense of bittersweet realization. She was finally on the way to achieving her dreams, but the journey to this moment had been anything but easy. In fact, it almost cost her life. Reflecting on her tumultuous encounters with Mrs. Thompson, the shocking revelations, and the loss of Granny Mimi, Raven understood that the path to success is rarely a smooth one. It's often riddled with obstacles and challenges, testing your resolve and pushing you to your very limits. But she also recognized that it was through these trials that she had grown stronger, more resilient, and more responsible. The darkness she had faced had shaped her into the person she had become, instilling within her a deeper appreciation for her aspirations and the determination to overcome any hurdle in her path. Whatever dreams you may have in your life, sit and ask yourself what you would be willing to do to reach them. The truth is you may not have the answer until life throws unexpected challenges your way. But always remember you cannot have the light without the dark and that on the path to achieving your dreams, you'll often have to face your darkest nightmares. If you enjoyed this presentation, please consider showing your support by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. And if you're in need of a narrator for your next project, or you just want to say hello, contact me at thehouseofdread666 at gmail.com. Until the next tale of terror, this is Victor Bloodborne. Stay dreadful.